Well, hello, good morning. We are back with my 87 325 IS. This car I'm getting ready to sell, so it's only got really one issue I have to deal with, which is the shift shaft seal, I believe, is leaking catastrophically on this car. Uh, and the actual selector rod isn't bent quite enough, so it is rubbing on the vibration dampener. So I'm gonna have to pull the shifter stuff apart and take a look and probably pound a new seal in there. I don't think I have to take anything apart except, you know, obviously take the linkage off. I don't think I have to drop the back of the trans, but it might help. So we'll kind of see when I get there. But right now, anyway, uh, I think first things first, I'm gonna have to take the clips off of both ends of the selector, which I have to take my watch off for because I need little dinky arms for that. Get that rod out of there, get that bent up a little bit more, and then I don't have a trans here, but on the back of it, there is a little rod that comes out of it, and there's a pin that goes through that, which holds the entire clip on for the motion forward back. <laughs> and side to side, you just have to pull that little uh, circlip off, essentially, and then push the pin through. Then you can get that whole piece off, and then you can just pound a new seal right into the back of the trans. Um, you don't really have to deal with taking the old one out on these, luckily, unless it's had like five, in which case that's a problem, because they'll all just pile up inside of the transmission. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna start doing right now. So wish me luck. So the pin on this one actually goes up. Uh, I'm not sure if I can get the clip out of the way enough to make it go down. I am gonna try that next because there isn't quite enough space even with the trans mounts dropped a hair. But you can get a good idea of what I'm talking about now, at least. All right, so that's what we're working with. Uh, when I put it back on, I'm actually gonna move the circlip forward, because it's a little easier to deal with it uh, that direction. But yeah, the key to getting this off is really just working your pick under the top and forcing it forward. And then you can either push this little pin up or down I thought it would go both ways. Uh, the later cars, the pin goes through sideways, not top to bottom. So anyway, that's out. Now, uh, that seal actually doesn't look bad. What the heck? So you can see exactly where it was rubbing. I'm gonna heat it up and give her a bend. Well. Hopefully that wasn't too much, but I think it'll be all right. So I didn't end up replacing the seal because it was dry, but the vent linkage looks like it's perfect. I put everything back together, so focus, there we go. I'll put it down and take it for a drive, see if it still makes that terrible noise, and then Maybe look under it again to see if it's still leaking gear oil. Maybe that was just a fluke. I don't really understand. <laughs> right, it's not a six speed. There's no idle control valve on this thing right now, so. Cold starting's a little iffy. And Megasquirt, the tack never works right. You have to look into that again and see if there's a way that I can correct it, but. Also, maybe I should go get gas. This thing is empty. Idle's already smoothing out, that's nice. Oh yes. 
shifter doesn't make noise. This is great. Hello, other unit. <laughs> Dang, dude, this thing drives nice. Yeah, I guess we'll go get gas. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not running quite right, but it's it's drivable. Yeah, diesel's a little bit. I'm not sure if that means it's rich. I think that's probably rich, but whatever. Well, I just had a thought that I never had before. The O2 sensor widebands come with a bung, so I just drilled a bung into it. By the way, the trans is dry now, no leaks, so I don't know what the hell was going on before, but I guess that's good news. Uh, I'm gonna put it back down now and try to plug in the sensor up top. I'm gonna see if I can find the O2 input wire for the MS2 PNP. Why the hell a brand new product doesn't just have a USB port on it? I will never understand, but I keep enough of these serial laptops around where I can usually make it work. Today I am having issues. Won't even read the tune. Great. Well, I found my Tuner Studio Pro license from the Blubski in the Turbo E30 days, so got that loaded and I have my wideband very sketchily installed. Let's go for a drive. getting pretty good. I think at this point the biggest thing is just going to be a valve adjustment but engine pull is actually really strong considering it's still got the 293 diff in the back. I don't know car is turning out to be pretty nice. Uh, my floor is super dirty but I don't see anything crazy coming from the trans so that's also good. All right, I fixed the tack output issue. If you're having the same issue, just go to general basic load settings, tack output, and then turn it on, and then turn signal to tack out. It was off, I don't know why. Works properly now though. not be bested by you charger loom thing. Gosh. I think the plan is to take this to Pikes Peak this year. Finally. <laughs> Got new tires on it last year just for that and ended up taking the Phantom.
Don't even know if Brexit's going to start today. I keep getting a battery warning on the charger, which is worrying. Oh no. SI lights are on.